You might notice a bit of a theme from me this season. Back up your data. Why? Because I've seen firsthand cases of people losing everything when all goes wrong. Losing work-related documents is bad. Losing your contact list is bad. Your calendar, bad. All of your settings in your computer, all those things are bad. But losing your photos, now that can be a tragedy. All the advances in digital photography have made it so approachable and so easy that sometimes we forget about backing them up. Now our photos are nothing more than ones and zeros on a magnetic disk. And a mistake or a small accident can turn all those ones and zeros into nothing but zeros. Which will make you, as the keeper of the computer in your house, a big zero with the significant other. So today, a few techniques to become a hero instead of a zero. There are many ways to back up your data, and some of them are more convenient than others. Today, we're going to take a look at Norton Save and Restore. Now, its strength is that it's based on Norton Ghost, which is more than just backup technology. It creates something called a disk image, which is not just your data, but all of your computer applications, your settings. They're all mirrored when you use Norton Ghost and Norton Save and Restore. So now, if you have to recover, you're up and running almost instantly. Now, there's no hard and fast rules for backing up other than doing it. But when it comes to your choice of media, your choice of personal routine, well, you've really got carte blanche there. So let me show you and walk through the process, and then you can figure out what sort of backup routine is going to work best for you. Now, when we install Norton Save and Restore, it installs in Norton Security Console, so it's here with all of our antivirus software and all of our firewall. It's in the Norton Save and Restore area, and we see several different choices right off the top. We can back up now, which we'll do in a moment. We can edit a backup schedule. So if you set a schedule for backup, that allows you to make modifications there. You can view your progress and you can also copy your hard drive. This is a very cool little utility. Say you're upgrading hard drives. You've got a small hard drive and you want to get a bigger hard drive. This allows you to copy the entire contents of your hard drive, of one drive, onto another drive. All of your setting, all of your applications, everything can move across so you can quickly and easily upgrade the size of your hard drive. And that's really useful, especially when you consider storing now movies as well as video, as well as photos, all, storing all those different data types. You might want a larger hard drive and they're very affordable now. So that's a nice little utility. But let's go into the backing up area to start. When we open backup now, it opens a schedule for us and it also brings us into a wizard that allows us to start the whole backup process. Now here I can back up either just my computer itself, which backs up basically everything on my computer, or I can choose to back up documents, which will allow me to back up my individual photos or my photo folder, my individual files or my file folders that allow me to back up individual things, maybe not all of my settings and not all my applications. I'm going to choose the custom setting because I want to show you all of the different steps involved, but you can use the wizard to very quickly create a backup of everything with just a few clicks of the mouse, but I want you to see all of the different settings. I'm going to choose backup my computer as a start, and here it brings me into a dialog box that shows me my drives. Now it's important to re recognize here, this is the drive that I want to back up, not the drive that I want to back up to. So here I'm going to choose my main drive, and I get a graphic representation here of how much space I've used and how much free space I have on that drive. We move along to set something called a recovery point. Now a recovery point will allow me to do incremental backups instead of one mass backup. Doing incremental backups means when you go to backup a second or third time that you don't have to back up as much data. You only have to back up the data that's changed between your first backup. And now we choose our destination. This is where we choose what sort of technique we're going to use for backing up our data. By technique, I mean are we going to back up to CD or DVD to a recordable disk? Or we, if we're just backing up our documents, we might want to back up onto a memory key. Now in my case, I'm going to back up onto a big honking hard drive. These are removable USB drives. They're very affordable. This one here is, I think, 300 gigabytes in size. We use them in the office for a lot of different things, but they're ideal for backing up your data. Now one of the really nice things about using this larger drive to back up your computer is you can back everything up onto it. So if you ever do have a disaster, once you bring your new computer in or restart your computer, reformat the hard drive on your old computer, you can be back up and running very quickly because you can move it all across. You don't have to keep swapping out drives. So these large USB or firewire drives are great value as far as that's concerned. You choose the location and you can just browse through here and this particular one is called Dottotech 4. It's number four of our large drives and I've chosen a backup folder here and that's where I want to back everything up onto. If we look down here in the bottom, it's grayed out now because I don't have it enabled, but you can also back up onto a network or back up onto a network drive, which is a very convenient way to back up as well. Then once you've done that, you can choose to either manually back up 
or do a scheduled backup. Now, if you're going to be backing up onto a hard drive like this one here, you're probably going to do it manually because you're going to have physically spent some time plugging it in and getting it ready to go. But if you're backing up onto either a partition on your hard drive or a second drive that you have stored in your computer, then you can set up a scheduled backup. You can also do a scheduled backup to a network location, and that will allow you to back up on a regular basis. You determine your schedule here. Now, you can back up every day or once a week. What I recommend people do is they back up both locally onto either a partition of their hard drive or an internal hard drive on their computer every day or once a week, whatever is appropriate for the amount of data and the amount of change in your data, and then either every week or once a month back up onto a removable drive like this hard drive. That way, if you have an ultimate disaster and your computer, say, gets stolen, you still have a backup that you can rely on. Now, hopefully, you're never going to need to use the restore part of Save and Restore, but it is a comfort to know that it's there if you need it. So why not make this your weekend tech project? It'll just take a few minutes to set things up, and when you're done, you might just save all your memories.